You'll have to pardon me if I seem a little out of it for this one. I just wasn't prepared. Sure, I've played most of the other games in the Twin Bee series, and a couple of related franchises as well, just to be safe, but nothing I'd seen in any of those cute em ups could have prepared me for. Banana Gators. Banana Gators. This shouldn't exist in this or any other world, and yet here it is, on my desk, in our Famicom, thanks to Mark and Fresh Meadows New York. Now I know who to send my therapy bill to. Holy Moses. Banana Gators. Well, at least they're not banana phones or side scrolling stages. That'd be terrible. Moto Twin Bee was an adventurous outing for the various bees, as they broke new ground in adding a third player and experimenting with side scrolling stages interspersed with the standard vertical shooting action you've come to know and love. Problem was, adding this third player required obtaining an extra controller, and the mechanics of bell juggling just didn't work nearly as well in a horizontal format as it did in vertical, which made the finished product suffer a bit as a result. Twin B3 goes back to its roots in providing five stages of pure, unblemished vertical scrolling schmuppery, complete with evil saxophones, metronomes that fire stuff at you, and whatever the hell this dude is. Some weird crystal raining self bifurcating baby? Only the third strangest thing I've seen all morning Banana Gators. While most of the other games in its series, and in fact the general expectation for shmups of its era, were tough as nails and thoroughly punishing, Twin B3 lightens up a bit. You've got the option to adjust your difficulty and starting life count, and you're now sure to lose a limb rather than a Twin B every time you take a hit. Which means, yes, so long as you can continue to hit the ambulances effectively, you can just chain damage all day long. And even if you do get shot down, you can reclaim all your power-ups if you successfully grab your ghost ship an innovation kept around from the tumultuous period known as Moeto Twinbee. Even the system of juggling bells to improve your power-ups has relaxed, now requiring fewer shots between each color. While it's easier to get the upgrades you need, the collision detection seems a bit suspect, leading you to think you should be hitting it more than you actually are. As would be expected, there are graphical tweaks all over, including more populous stages full of road signs and other bits of flavor, and the bosses are freaking huge. Bet you never thought you'd be seeing a dude on the internet performing dental work on a dragon today. While it wasn't as directly innovative as its predecessor, Twin B3 certainly tried to push the envelope in other aspects while bringing the game back to relative basics. Konami's standard of rapidly changing background themes remains intact, and there's even voice clips though mangled voice clips passed through the Famicom mind, that announced the name of each stage as you start it. Pretty impressive for 1989, and a true shame we never got it here in the States. Instead, we got Nanarpus. And you know what? He likes pancakes. Nanarpus. 